Hi, my name is Graham Smith, and I'm one of the authors that helped develop the learning approach to mathematics that is found in our textbook as well as the video you are about to experience. To learn more about our approach to learning mathematics, visit the web address that accompanies this video. Now, enjoy the video. Understanding whole numbers. This video will help you understand place value, write whole numbers in expanded form, graph numbers on the number line, round whole numbers, and read numbers on a bar graph. Take a look at some definitions. The digits in our number system are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. We use just these 10 digits to represent all the numbers in our number system. Place value uses the position or placement of the digits in a number to indicate the value of the digit. For example, if we're taking a look at $234, the 2 represents 200, the 3 represents 30, and the 4 represents $4. It's not just a case of 2 plus 3 plus 4. It's a case of 200 plus 30 plus 4. It's important to be able to recognize the three-digit place value pattern that occurs in our number system. You may have noticed that every time we write numbers, after every three digits, we put a comma. The reason we do that is because we're separating the periods of our number system. Every three digits represents a period. Inside of each of these periods is this repeating pattern of ones, tens, and hundreds. So every time I jump to the next period, the next group of three digits, this pattern continues. Ones, tens, and hundreds so on and so forth. And this is important to be able to recognize or read the value of a number in our place value system. To be able to identify or read a number in our place value system, you're going to have to be able to memorize the place value periods. And here they are listed. Starting over at the right, we have the ones period, which is the first group of three digits, followed by the thousands period, which is the next group of three digits, then the millions, then the billions, and then the trillions. To read a number, read each three-digit group, and then state the period. Let's take a look at this example here. So I start over at the left with the largest period and the largest place value. So the value of this digit in that period is 1. So I would say 1, and since it is the 1, 2, 3, fourth period, I'm going to count 1, 2, 3, 4th period, that is the billions period. So since that 1 is in the billions period, I would say 1 billion. Then I would read the next group of three digits. 234, well 234 is in the millions period, so I would say 234 million. Then I'll read the next group of three digits. 567,000, and then finally finish with 890. Notice on that last one, we don't actually say the ones period. We say all the other periods except for that last one. It's kind of understood that we're in the ones period there. So to read this number again, I have 1,234,567,890. Now let's take a look at a couple of examples that will help us understand the place value system and reading numbers in our place value system. Let's take a look at example one. Say the number, this large number, in words. Well, I'm going to start over here. Let's see. There is one, two, three, four periods there. So I'm starting over at the largest period there. Well, since there's four, that's the billions period. So I would read that number, those digits in that billions period, which is 62. So I would say 62 billion. Now I'm going to go to the next period. And there's just two, two million in the next period. And then the next one. 419,000, and then finally the last one, 36. So to say this number in words, I would say 62 billion, 2 million, 419,000, 36. Let's take a look at example two. Identify the place value of the digit four in this large number. Well, here's our digit four. Okay, that digit is in the millions period. And in the millions period, that digit 4 is in the tens place of the millions period. So that digit 4 
is in the ten millions place. Now it's time to check your understanding of our place value system. Hit pause on your video player and answer these two guided practice questions. When you finish, hit play to see how you did. Question one. Say this large number in words. Well, it looks like we have one, two, three, four periods here. So the fourth period is the billions period. So I'm going to start with billions. So I would say two billion, two million, seven hundred and twelve thousand, seventy. Question two. Identify the place value of the digit four in this large number. Well, here's my digit four, and that is in the thousands period, and it is in the tens place of the thousands period. So that digit four is in the ten thousands place. Now let's take a look at expanded notation and graphing. We'll start with expanded notation. I have a number 234 written here in standard notation. It's typically how we see that number. All we have to do to write that number in expanded form is write the value of each of the digits and use addition to add them all together. So for example, since 2 is in the hundreds place, its value is 200. Then I'll write an addition sign. 3 is in the tens place, so its value is 30. Another addition sign, and then finally, 4 is in the ones place, so its value is just 4. Now let's take a look at some examples that involve expanded form and also graphing numbers on the number line. Example 3. We want to write 3,467 in expanded form. So I'm going to start with the largest place value, which is the 3. Now that is worth 3,000 plus the value of the next, next digit, which is 400. And in the next digit, the value of the 6 is actually 60 because it's in the tens place. And then finally, the last digit, 7, is in the ones place, so its value is just 7. And that is 3,467 in expanded form. Example 4. We want to graph these four numbers on the number line. And you can see that my numbers range from 40 to 78. Now, I want to divide up this line that I have down here so that these numbers will fit on there. The first time I tried this I went by, I counted by tens with the tick marks and that wasn't enough. So this time I'm going to go through and I'm going to count by 20. So I'm starting with zero and every tick mark I'm going to go by 20. So 20, 40, 60, 80, I'll put 100 out there, I didn't need to do it but I'll just go ahead and put it on there to finish it out. Now I want to graph each of these points on the number line. Well, for the first one, 40, is actually already labeled on my number line. So all I have to do is put a dot at 40. Same thing with 60. 60 is already labeled. Now when I get to 63, however, that's going to fall just a little bit more than 60. So I'm just going to kind of estimate that. Now if I just left that dot there, no one would know what that number was because it doesn't have a label. So I'm going to write above here. 63, so they'll be able to identify that number. The last number, 78, is also not going to fall right on one of the tick marks, so I'm going to draw a line, and I'm going to come up here, and I'm going to label 78. Now it's time to check your understanding of expanded form and graphing numbers on the number line. Hit pause on your video player and answer these two guided practice questions. When you finish, hit play to see how you did. Question 3. Write 14,005 in expanded form. Well, we're going to start with a 1, and that is in the 10,000s place. So that is actually worth, or its value is actually 10,000. The 4 is in the 1,000s place, so that its value is 4,000. The only other digit that I have in this problem that's not 0 is the 5, and that's in the 1s place. So that's just going to be 5. Question 4. Graph these four numbers on the number line, and you can see I'm ranging from 80 all the way up to 185. That's quite a stretch. I think I'm going to go by 40 in this graph. So I'll start here at 0, and then I'll go 40, 80, 120, 160, and then 200. 
80 and 120 fall on tick marks. So I'm just going to go ahead and put a dot at 80. I'm going to put a dot at 120. Those are graphed. Uh, 133 does not. So we're going to kind of estimate where 133 would be. Say it's right about there. Then I'm going to label it. And then also 185. Uh, 180 would be exactly halfway. So 185 is a little bit more than halfway. Now let's take a look at a definition. Rounding is the process of choosing the best approximation for a number at a given place value. Let's take a look at a common sense approach to rounding. You owe a friend $112 and you only have $10 bills to pay them back. What is the fairest amount to pay your friend at this time? $110 or $120? Well this question is actually asking us to round but I'm sure you know the answer already that we need to pay them $110. The reason is that $110 is a better approximation because it's closer to 112 than 120 is. So we're going to pay your friend $110. That's as simple as rounding is. Now let's take a look at the formal procedure doing the same problem. And remember to kind of keep track of this common sense approach to rounding because the formal procedure actually follows that same common sense approach. So step one in the formal procedure is to identify the digit that we need to round. Well, our number is $112. Since we only have $10 bills, the digit that we're going to round is in the tens place. So what we're actually asking ourselves to do here is to round 112 to the tens place. Step two, decide if the digit to be rounded increases by one or stays the same. Well, here are our choices then. We're looking at $112. This is the digit that I'm rounding. When I round it either stays the same or increases. If it increases or goes up, it's going to become a two and I get a value of 120. If it stays the same, the value itself will go down and I get a value of 110. What we're asking now is which is the better approximation? 120 or 110? Well, 110 is the better approximation because it is closer to 112. So in step three, all of the digits to the right of the rounded digit will be zero. Well, we take a look that one was the digit that we were rounding, right? All the digits to the right of that are going to become zero and that's how we end up with this $110. Now let's take a look at some examples that will help us understand rounding. Example 5. Round 1,562 to the nearest hundreds place. Well, step 1 is to identify the digit that we're going to round. Since we're rounding to the hundreds place, that digit is the 5. Step 2 is to determine whether that digit 5 needs to stay the same or increase by 1. Well, let's see. If it stays the same, the number is going to round down and the number is going to be 1500. If that digit increases by one, it's going to go up one, and my rounded answer will be 1600. Which of those two choices is a better approximation for 1562? The answer is 1600. I know that because if I look to the right of the five, that digit is a six. And since that digit is a six, 1,562 is actually closer to 1,600 than it is to 1,500. So when I round this to the hundreds place, I'm going to use my approximation symbol, I'm going to get an answer of 1,600. Let's take a look at example 6. Round 12,645 to the nearest 10 thousands place. Well, 10 thousands place. The digit that's in the 10 thousands place is the 1. So if that digit increases or goes up, I will get 20,000. Because remember, after I round that digit, everything is going to become a zero after that digit. If that digit stays the same, I'm going to get an answer of 10,000. Which of those two numbers is a better approximation for 12,645? Well, 10,000 is much closer to 12,000 than it is to 20,000. Well, 10,000 is a better approximation for 12,000 than 20,000. So when I round that number to the 10,000's place, I get an answer 
10,000. Now it's time to check your understanding of rounding. Pause your video player and answer these two guided practice questions. When you're done, hit play to see how you did. Question 5. Round 17,562 to the nearest thousands place. Well, first we have to identify the digit that is in the thousands place, and that's the 7. So our two choices, that digit can go up and we get an answer of 18,000, or that digit can stay the same and we'll get an answer of 17,000. Which is a better approximation for 17,562? Well, 18,000 is closer, so that's our better approximation. So when we round this, we get an answer of 18,000. Question 6. Round 142,344 to the nearest hundred thousands place. Well, let's take a look. First, we've got to identify the digit that's going to get rounded. Well, the digit is a 1, all the way out there in the hundred thousands place. Now, that digit can increase by 1, and if it does, we'll go up to 200,000. If it stays the same, our answer will be 100,000. Which is a better approximation for 142,344? Well, the answer is 100,000. It's closer. So when we round that number to the hundred thousands place, we actually get a hundred thousand. Now let's take a look at reading a bar graph. Let's take a look at example seven. What was Plato's height when he was 14 years old? Well, if we take a look at our bar graph here, it looks like we have height over here on the left and age down on the bottom. And so we're looking at an age of 14. So we're taking a look here. Here's an age of 14. Now to figure out his height, all we got to do is follow the bar graph up to the top. And it looks like it's in between 55 and 60. So we're just going to approximate that. And again, we don't, have to be, we don't have to be exactly accurate here because we're just getting an approximation. So it looks about maybe a little bit more than halfway. So I'm going to say his height was 58 inches. Now it's time to check your understanding of bar graphs. Pause your video player and answer guided practice 7. When you finish, hit play to see how you did. Question 7. What was Plato's height when he was 17? Well, first we're going to take a look at his age. Here he is at 17. And so the top of the bar graph is going to be his height at 17. If we follow this over, we would approximate that to be around 72 or 73. Uh, we, I don't know about 71. 72 or 73 would be a good approximation for that. If you found this video helpful, I encourage you to check out our other videos that we have on YouTube or visit the web address that accompanies this video to learn more about our approach to learning mathematics.